Hi, this is Dennis Surgent. Welcome to the Design Team Fundamentals segment. This is the first of a five-part series about how the Design Team model or a network of teams makes effective results. So a good question is what are design teams used for? They're chartered by sponsors at the heart of great improvements to existing processes or services or products in order to deliver great outcomes for customers and stakeholders. They can also be chartered to design new processes, new services, new products and technologies. Design teams are an integral part of successful organizations and team of teams is an idea that you'll hear more about in later slideshows. We use design team structures to integrate the work of multiple teams and commercial companies report a range of 30 to 60% productivity increase when they learn these methods. And even government uses report more agile and effective adaptation to obstacles from these practices. Interdependent teams are the point, not independent. It's important for design team success to pay attention to the basic team characteristics. And if one or more of these are missing, the self-managed team will not be able to improve performance. It requires a meaningful shared purpose. It requires specific goals, complementary skills of the different design team members. The size of the team can be quite important and we'll discuss that later, along with a clear working approach and mutual responsibility. The design team model is based on this very interesting quote from Bucky Fuller. And he said decades ago that you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. And design team structures and methods are just such a new model. They're a way for us to align multiple decisions by teams to more effective aims. We use the individual members on a design team and their charter's aim and purpose to align the team interactions and decisions with the overarching purpose of the organization. It becomes a network or team of teams through this process and through this model. This model starts with a guiding or core council that's chartered by executive sponsors to lead a system-wide initiative. This core council is responsible to lead and manage the initiative, to manage the network of interactions, to define purpose, and to build trust among the various initiative subteams, which is what a design team is. The core council charters individual design teams for the variety of initiatives that might be part of the systemic change that they want to make. And again, it's not just about change, but it's about improvement through change. The core council integrates the networked efforts of the various design teams and ensures that the individual initiatives progress with improvements from week to week. Design teams are chartered to lead a specific initiative to improve a process or a service or a product. They're chartered to use the science of improvement to use design team structures and methods and design these improvements that are part of their charter. Design teams also report their progress to the core council at least weekly. They do this through stand and deliver sessions, a regular cadence of what is a report of five minutes or less. They talk about what was learned and improved in their PDSA cycles. They talk about roadblocks and they share evidence with other design teams of what they've learned or what they've improved. They also have an opportunity to get feedback from other design teams about other aspects that help integrate their work with that of the whole system. Design teams can also spin off and charter action teams to implement specific improvements that are outside their subject matter expertise. These additional charters need to be approved by the core council. Action teams also report progress to the guiding council at least weekly 
They use the same design team methods. They use the stand and deliver sessions with a chartering design team. So it's a joint presentation of what the design team for the specific initiative might report, as well as what the individual action teams do. They are also design teams. Sometimes the programmatic or systemic change is so huge that a program management office is required to track all the information from multiple design teams. We have seen as many as 135 different design teams working on improving a system that was in great disarray. And a program management office helps track all the various interdependencies. Please note in this diagram that there are lighter lines and darker lines. It's important for us to recognize that communications is essential to integrate this effort. Trust is essential to make effective communications. And so the relationships that are depicted here in the lighter diagram are enhanced when we look at the darker lines that indicate upward and downward regular communications between the core council and the individual design teams. It's really critical that those relationships are reinforced with trust. These darker lines represent that frequent two-way communications needed between the council and the design teams, as well as with the action teams. Transparency within the initiative is critical as is that trust in communications that's effective. One of the reasons we'll cover in a few minutes is about the size of design teams. And it's important for us to think about this weekly cadence of reporting to not be the minimum limit, but a maximum limit. We also want to acknowledge that tampering from within the teams and from without can occur. There's not supposed to be any interference from inside or outside the teams, not with the guiding council, not with the design teams or the action teams. This means that it's really critical that the sponsor's charter for the guiding council and the guiding council's charters with each design team are used to bring the tampering under control. Disruptive influences of the structure of relationships should always be directed back to the executive sponsors. Some manager has to approve the membership of any individual on a design team, and they need to understand who is the executive sponsor. And they also need to understand that there will be a commitment of time for this work. So they have to be involved and approved, but they are not permitted to tamper with the work of the design team. The design teams, as well as the core council, should be very focused on their work. They should also be focused on keeping people informed about the progress that's being made by the team. This goes a long way to avoid tampering. The differences in design teams go to these five critical roles. We ask for people to join design teams that are capable of leadership. We want people to join these design teams who are willing to make a difference in their work for the benefit of their customers. And there are five distinct roles we're going to talk briefly about in this segment and in further segments. And these five very distinct roles are not the only roles that team members fulfill, but they are the five most critical roles for reasons that you'll soon understand. Eventually, everybody should rotate through these roles in order to understand better the work of the design team. We'll have more to say about design team structures in the next video. Thank you for your attention and your interest, please feel free to contact me by email or by phone with any questions you have. If I can't answer your phone call immediately, please leave a message with your number and I'll call you back right away. Thank you.